Good evening. Thanks for having me here. I hope everybody had a nice Thanksgiving. Uh, we're going to talk about preliminary budget. I guess I hit the button. There's our agenda. Um, so, uh, whoop, there we go. There it is. So we're going to talk about preliminary budget. Um, as a reminder, uh, everybody on the board has been through this exercise before. Um, Act 1 specifies um, what we have to do and when we have to do it by um, as, a, as a, uh, a runway up to getting the final budget done, which we, which we shoot for in the late part of May. Um, so in order to make that timeline, we're starting this process in November as we have the past, well, basically since I've been with the district. Um, and um, professionally, I will tell you that this is called a preliminary budget, but professionally, I would say this is a very preliminary budget. And the reasons I will say that is because um, when you look at um, where we are, and it's on a later slide, but when you look at where we are, we're only a couple minutes, months into operation to see if this budget is really taking tra uh, traction yet. So, but the first thing I want to do is go through the timeline so I can, um, so we can look at where we're going. Tonight, of course, we're going to talk about uh, the proposed preliminary budget. Um, the law says that we have to have it um, available for public inspection 20 days before it's adopted. So that will have to be done by uh, January 1st. So my team will be working uh, diligently to get that done. That'll be on the form, the PDE form 2028. Uh, we'll post it to the, to the website and of course have hard copy in the, uh, in the district office if anybody chooses to come look at it. Um, we give public notice on the 12th uh, and we'll look to adopt that uh, proposed preliminary budget um, on the 22nd at, the, at that board meeting. Um, we will file for um, our uh, referendum exceptions uh, in the beginning of uh, uh, February. Um, and likely that number typically is around one and a half to two million. Not that we've used them since I've been here at least. Um, but funds available should we need it. Following that, we will uh, sharpen our pencils uh, and look at the chunks, as Mrs. Zazowski likes to say, and we will uh, you know, put heads down and we'll uh, get, uh, getting the budget books out to the different departments and the buildings. I couldn't pass that up, you know. Um, but getting the budget books out to the buildings, going through the uh, personnel plan, uh, which will start, I believe, at some point in January. Um, and look at where we're going so that we'll have a proposed final budget presentation and the adoption uh, of that at the uh, April board meeting. That is not the final, that is the proposed final. We still have 30 days uh, to work on that budget before its final adoption, which would be targeted for May the 27th, keeping in mind that we have all the way until June 30th to get it adopted. I don't advise waiting that long, but we can by law at least. Um, some challenges in uh, preparation of this very preliminary budget are, as I said before, the timing. We're four months into the current year, fiscal year, two months into operations. Uh, so that means there's not a ton of data to, to really look at to see um, if the budget we have for this year is really taking traction. We do have some evidence that it is, but there's still a lot of time to go through there. This is also a labor negotiation year. Um, with our teachers uh, uh, association. So those, uh, those discussions obviously, well, I shouldn't say obviously, those discussions may or may not have an impact on this preliminary budget. Um, the state budget, there's always a bunch of unknowns there. That doesn't come out, uh, the first draft doesn't usually come out until the February timeframe. Um, uh, and it's very difficult to uh, ascertain what the subsidies might look like. We had a prior administration where the subsidies, the, you know, the basic ed subsidy and the special, it didn't really move all that much until that last year. Um, and then the current, excuse me, the current administration, it was a big boom. Whether it's still going to be a big boom going forward, it's hard to say. Um, and then, of course, it's an election year, so I don't know if the discussions around property tax reform are going to start coming back up again. So who knows? Um, but let's look at some of the uh, let's look at some of the, the, the major items within this uh, preliminary budget. Of course, always wages and benefits, personnel costs are the biggest piece of any service industry uh, 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 organization. They account for in this in this case about 70 percent, pretty consistently year over year. 
um, and I'm just talking about basic organic growth here. So uh, just as, uh, as our uh, staff moves through the salary schedule, that will add approximately $1.7 million to this budget as it stands right now. Um, for admin and support wages, uh, add another half a million or so, a little bit more than that. And then a provision in this preliminary budget, which is basically formulaic based on um, uh, uh, student population trends and trends in uh, special education needs and those types of things, looking at about $800,000 in potential new positions. Uh, again, that, those are done uh, formulaically in the budget model. Um, those, of course, result in changes to the taxes and benefits line. Um, so for retirement, for example, uh, this year, uh, this current year, uh, retirement costs of the district are 34% of payroll. Um, it's projected to be 34.73, so add another quarter point uh, to that. Um, those final numbers aren't due out until like mid-December, so I'll have a better gauge when that happens, but just looking at the, uh, the projection of that increase would be about 1.85 million. Um, medical and dental and such, looking at an increase there of about $900,000. That's right in line with Rischini. In the first look we just did, uh, Mrs. Lisa and I did with them uh, about, about two weeks ago. Um, and then of course, payroll taxes, you know, as, as the wages go up, so do the taxes related to it about 456. Um, now if I look at some non-personnel related things, um, again, these are items that will need to be scrubbed through as we move forward in, after the new year. Um, special education services, um, you know, th those are outside services and placements and those types of things, potentially about a million there. Uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. G.M. Batista and I will be talking in detail about that in the coming months. Transportation, according to our contract, about 785,000. Charter schools increases are always a concern um, with the uh, increase in, um, uh, you know, registrations there uh, and, of course, the increases in per pupil costs each year. Substitutes, Western Center. Curriculum looks like a larger number because um, there's, we're expecting to have some curriculum buys. Mrs. Gardy and I will be talking about that in detail over the coming months. But I put an asterisk there because at the bottom you can see a, a good portion of that is offset by funding through the tech reserve that we of course set up uh, a few years ago as part of the longer term plan which will offset some of those costs. Um, facilities about 160,000 uh, there. Um, Dan and I, of course, and Sean will be going through those numbers in detail soon. Um, and then, of course, uh, we talked about this in finance, I think towards the end of last year, a potential increase in the budgetary reserve, which has been flat at, at a $300,000 number since long before I came here, probably should be more tied as a percentage of the overall budget, and that's what that contemplates. So if I put all that together, what it looks like is um, the, the numbers are, of course, uh, fun to watch, but I look at that bottom right-hand number and you can see an increase year over year in budget to budget of about 6.72%. Um, again, as I said earlier, very preliminary. But let's take a quick, I wanna remember that 6.72% because I'm gonna compare that to, uh, to the revenue side shortly. So looking at that revenue side of the ledger, um, local uh, income is about 80% of the overall revenue bucket for uh, uh, for Spring Ford. Um, so a lot of local dollars go into our stuff. So if I look at, and again, this is just organic growth. Organic growth is saying that about 1.97%, we should see an upward trend uh, in our real estate taxes, which uh, equates to about two and a half million dollars. Um, it's important to note that that's an increase in assessments, which is typically, well, unless someone's improving their home, adding a pool or that type of stuff, your assessment stays the same, right? This is adding properties to the assessment base, so, or, or, or home improvements, additions, or those types of things. Um, so that's what the two, and that's without raising, uh, raising any taxes or uh, tax rates. Earned income tax uh, has been very strong for the past number of years, same with transfer tax, uh, real estate transfer taxes. So we're looking at increasing those estimates uh, going forward. Small increase in delinquent taxes as our ev revenues are, 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 sorry, our inventories of delinquent taxes are lower than they have been. Uh, so uh, as there's only a small increase there, uh, that 
is actually a good thing because that means that folks, our residents, are paying their taxes on time, which is a great thing. On the state side, uh, we leveled up on the uh, basic education and the special education subsidy based on this current year's allocation, um, which was about 700,000 more than we thought we were going to get um, you know, by the time we uh, approved our budget last year. Um, so we go up to that, uh, to that level. We'll know more about that in February, um, and then we'll have to wait and see what sticks once we start hearing the, what the discussions are in the, in the chambers. Um, transportation subsidy, I, I'm, I, it's, I think it's important to take that down. We're seeing that as a lower percentage of overall transportation costs uh, as a downward trend. Um, PEASERS and FICA subsidies, almost a million dollars greater. Uh, that's because we're increasing, number one, the percentage, but also the base of the, of the wages. So you pay more, you get a little bit more of the subsidy. Uh, plan con, we're looking probably at a reduction, at, well, we are looking at a reduction of that, and that's simply because some of our debt is rolling off. Um, so we won't be getting those subsidies. Um, federal, everyone knows, I would hope at least that um, come the end of uh, this year, give or take, it's really September of 24, ESSER's done. So we're looking at a, a drop in, uh, in those numbers as well. So now when I look at those revenue numbers, budget to budget, side by side, again, the numbers are interesting, um, but what I see is, again, in that bottom right-hand corner, I see 2.35% compared to the 6.72% I saw on a organic growth on the expense side of the budget, and you can see where that disparity is. So expenses are growing faster than organic revenues. Um, when I look at what kind of gap we have, this is not uncommon for this time of year. Um, so we're looking at a gap of about, uh, you know, uh, revenues and other funding sources over expenses, uh, a shortage of about a little under eight and a half million dollars, which if we were to look at a tax impact number there is about six and a half percent. Um, if I would look up to make up that gap to get us down to uh, the index, I'm not, I'm sorry, six and a half percent total, not to get down to the index. Um, it's not uncommon. I think the past number of years we have, we've been in that ballpark this time uh, going forward. So some, just some final thoughts. Um, just a reminder that the index for this coming year is 5.3%. It's up from 4.1%. Um, that's due to economic conditions, obviously. Um, the referendum, referendum exceptions uh, that will likely be available to us, as I said earlier, is about one and a half million to $2 million, um, should we want to tap that. Um, the next steps, of course, are the deep dives. Um, I don't have to read them. You guys can read them there. So, um, but really what we're looking to do next from my side is to get budget books out to the, um, to the departments and to the buildings so they could start going through uh, what they're looking at their spends might look like, um, getting the personnel plan together that, of course, as I said before, will likely start right after the new year. Um, and of course, getting the uh, getting the this very preliminary budget uh, approved in January. Any questions, comments? Uh, <coughs> Mr. Fink, me. Mr. Jackson. Well, thank you, Mr. Fink. Um, this is the same dance we do every year. There's nothing new here. The approach has been consistent since I've been on the board. Um, and we will continue to focus on, <coughs> excuse me, um, working the numbers, we're doing the deep dives. Um, our monthly meetings, we go through this, so if you want to be involved, come to, our, come to the finance meetings. Everything is discussed there in detail. Um, for the current board members, and I know we have four or five coming on, um, this is the time to start um, submitting uh, your, con your suggestions and, you know, not waiting until we're at the 11th hour and we're all scrambling trying to do simple math. So this is November. This gives us eight months, gives all of us eight months to uh, participate in this process. And thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Dr. Wright? Thank you very much. And um, 
and, I, and echoing what Mr. Jackson said, it's a time right now to start listening, gathering information, things like that. Um, and having been here, done this for a while, I, I do recognize also that number is high. We're going to work to bring that down. Uh, in looking at information gathering, I just had a question for you, which is kind of separate from this. Um, the annual finance report, the audit report, I think this is about the time of year that we normally would get that, and that I think is valuable information for us to look at going forward. Can you share any time? Yeah, I could, I could tell you that that currently is in quality assurance at our, uh, at our auditor's office. Um, I don't expect many changes on that. I, I do know it's a clean audit, as it always is, <laughs> at least since I've been here. Um, but I'll have more information on it when the final report comes out, which should be within the next month and a half or so. Great. So you'll be sharing that with the board, with the community, so that they're I'd likely be sharing that at committee. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Fink? Okay, thank you.